it, stay here and look at it. Otherwise, it gets off. So now we're going to turn it on. That's it. You just watch this, or else maybe come out here every now and then. You got it going. It's going. So just all you got to do is watch it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. It is 11 o'clock, and so we're going to start our press conference. Uh, we're right on the button, so we're kind of proud of that. My name is Ray Lutz with Citizens Oversight. Right here in front of the San Diego Registrar of Voters. I apologize for the noise. They always do this to us. They start all the noise in, in the back to sort of disrupt our news conference. But uh, no, they're building a building next door. So ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to talk about a new lawsuit which has just been filed this week uh, against the San Diego County Registrar of Voters. This lawsuit has to do with access of the ballots in the 2016 primary election. Now, ballots are what the, uh, is included in the set of things they call public records. And in this country, in pretty much every state, there's an acknowledgement that documents, recordings, and anything else that's made by the government is actually owned by the public. This is because we, the public, own the government. It's our government. And so, therefore, any anything that they create, paperwork and so forth, is, uh, is actually owned by the public, and so we have a right to get to it. That's what they call, in California, the California Public Records Act, CPRA. You can make requests of any governmental agency and say, please provide this document or that document, as long as you know what they are, and they have to theoretically give that to you within 10 days. Now, ballots are public records. There's no question about this. Everybody acknowledges that these are documents that are created by our government and the normal course of business, and therefore they're considered to be public records. However, now let me add one more thing. There's a federal law that requires that the registrar of voters keep the ballots for 22 months after every election. You would think that so that we could inspect those ballots to make sure everything was done right. That's why they have you keep them. Why they have the registrar of voters keep them for 22 months. Federal law. But when you go up to the registrar of voters and you say, I'd like to take a look at the ballots, they say, sorry, there's an election code that says we get to seal them and we can't open them up. And so you can't look at them. So there is a basic dispute here between, on one hand, the right of the public to see the public records that are created by the government. On the other hand, this provision in the election code that says they seal them up and never look at them. Now, the Public Records Act in our government is actually pretty strong in that it is actually cited in the Constitution, not just as a uh, statute. It's actually in the Constitution that says we're, we have the right to every document. So in this state, it's a very strong law that we have right to that, those documents. So there's a basic dispute about uh, do can we take a look at the documents or not? That's really all there is in this lawsuit. This lawsuit, we have asked them to look at the ballots and be able to hopefully photograph a sample of the pri primary 2016 ballots, most specifically the early vote by mail ballots is what we want to look at. I'll tell you about that in a second. But the lawsuit is about getting to these public records. <coughs> so just tell you a little bit about this, I'd like to introduce the attorney who's handling the case uh, with CARE Law Group, 
and his name is Alan Jirasi. Alan, come on up here. Yes, I'm Alan Jirasi of Care Law Group, working with Citizens Oversight and Raymond Lutz. Um, we're a few minutes late because uh, I got hot off the press, the conformed copy of the complaint and the summons. So uh, I, I knew Ray would want that, so I went down and made sure I got it for him. Electronically filed. It's got the number now. Yep. So it's Let's give it a hand. So as, as Ray outlined, essentially the, the lawsuit is, is rather uh, simple. It's basically making a public records request. Uh, the county is refusing uh, citizens' oversight. Access to the ballots is public records. And we're going to uh, be making those arguments probably in short order because there are no factual disputes. And when, there's no, when there are no factual disputes, you don't need a trial. You simply need to make a motion to the court and have the judge adjudicate the legal issues. Uh, the county registrar's position concerns the sealing of the ballots under the elections code and making them inaccessible uh, because of the sealing process. And our position is, of course, that uh, they are public records and the seals can be broken and there's precedent for the fact that the seal has been broken for accessing ballots and viewing them and inspecting them and or copying them. So uh, we'll hopefully get in front of a judge in the next 35 uh, to 60 days. Uh, I'm going to be serving this complaint today uh, on the registrar and meeting with the county council hopefully next week and trying to get a abbreviated schedule together. So we'll keep you posted. Thanks, Alan. So, you know, Usually you make a Public Records Act request and within 10 days they have to tell you why they're not, either give you the records or tell you why they're not going to do it. Well, it's typical with this guy, this is Michael Vu here who runs the, the San Diego County Registrar of Voters. He's an appointed official, he used to work in Cuyahoga County, Ohio in 2004 when George W. Bush won against John Kerry in a very, very uh, questionable race. And in fact, after that election was held in Ohio, uh, a person, uh, a gentleman, and uh, many, many volunteers stepped forward and did inspect the ballots in many counties throughout Ohio. And that gentleman's name is, was, or, or is, Richard Hayes Phillips, and he wrote the book, Witness to a Crime, about what happened in Ohio during that election. So we know that these ballots can be viewed. It's been done before against the same guy who's here. So he's well aware of it. But this county, they didn't even respond to my first letter. They just said no. They didn't tell me why. Then we sent a second one that said, you got to tell us why you said no. And then they said, well, because of the privacy issues. And we said, there isn't any privacy issues. Ballots have no personal information on them. or Otherwise, they're regarded as, as soiled. So you can't have any personal information on the ballot uh, when it goes in. And so therefore, that whole whole case is, is just bunk. Now I want to go over our larger concerns here and if you're online and I'm going to put this in the video there's no way I've found out that you can actually see anything that I hold up here. I'm going to go over this little chart. This was from the primary in San Diego and we're looking at just the race between Hillary Rodham Clinton and Bernie Sanders who were the Democratic candidates for president, as you probably well know. Now, there are three, four categories of ballots that they process. The early vote by mail ballots, uh, that was about 26 to 27 percent of the ballots in the election. And again, I apologize for this noise. I hope it's not too bad in the recording. 
During the early vote by mail ballots, they said that Hillary beat Bernie by 64% to uh, 36%. But then in the polling place, which is about 38% of the ballots, Bernie Sanders won. He got 42 percent, uh, I'm sorry, Hillary got 42 percent of the vote against Bernie Sanders 58 percent. So it was a landslide for Bernie Sanders in the polls. And whereas it was a landslide for Hillary Clinton in the early vote by mail ballots. But then in the later vote by mail ballots, it was a toss up, 50-50. And then finally in the provisionals, again, Bernie Sanders won by about 66% to 37%. So it was only in the early vote by mail ballots where Hillary Clinton beat out Bernie Sanders in the primary in San Diego. In all other categories, Bernie Sanders either won by a landslide or it was even. Now it's very curious here that the vote by mail ballots, which were either processed before the election and that were then reported on election night, or the ballots that were then later processed, the vote by mail that was later processed. In one case, Hillary Clinton had 64% and in another vote by mail ballot set, it was 50-50. So that's a 14% bump for Hillary Clinton in the early vote by mail ballots over Bernie Sanders. Huge, huge difference. And the early vote by mail ballots are usually regarded as being roughly indicative of how the rest of the race is gonna go because those are opened up at 8 p.m. and they go, oh, her, Hillary Clinton winning by a landslide and then everybody goes to bed. And then the next day, they still say that she won, but it doesn't actually, the rest of these things don't actually happen for another month. So you don't know how close it's gonna be. It was within 3.75%. Now, that means that these early vote by mail ballots are suspect because they're so much different from the rest of the election. And there's other reasons that we're worried about these. Number one, when they did the manual tally, which they did do on the set, they didn't just randomly take them out of the storage and then tally them. What they did was they first hired 40 people to go in for a week and pre-stack those ballots so that they would probably come up right and then they tallied them. The wrong way to do it. Then the next thing was they also use white out tape. And they say, we use, they make a big deal about this. We don't use white out, we use white out tape to modify the ballots. Well, first of all, you know, nobody expected them to use using white out at all. And then they say, okay, but we're using white out tape. And that means that it, they can be easily inspected to make sure that it was done right. The problem is, is that no one does this inspection. There's no automatic review of those whiteouts that were done. Probably thousands of ballots were modified and they admit this, they admit this. During the early vote by mail ballots, those are done in the 10 days before the election. And that's a time when we didn't have our volunteers on board well enough to be watching those 10 days about what they were doing. But when we finally did come in, they were still whiting out the ballots. And so that great, gave us great concern. So that's the second step of this process. The first step is to get access to the ballots. And hopefully we go in with volunteers. We may have to pay the registrar to actually handle the ballots because they're always very concerned about anyone else touching them. And that's that's okay, we'll work with them. We're gonna have to make sure they understand it's our expectation that we're gonna wanna photograph these ballots so we can then leave the office here and be able to prove what we saw later. 
Now, if we go back in and we're just gonna sample this early vote by mail set or anything else that we see that looks suspicious, we're gonna sample this early vote by mail set to see how it turns out. Now, if everything is fine, it should, it should support the result of the registrar voters. You would think they'd be happy for us to go in and confirm their result, but no, they're scared to death. They said, you can't get the ballots. You have to take us to court to even look at them now. Now, we have one more card up our sleeve. And I don't know how this is going to work out. But right after the election, we did file, Ray Lutz, because he had to be a voter, did file a contest of the election to contest it. Now, in this election, you may have noticed that in the Democratic primary, there was almost no time after the primary was over before there was a big convention and Bernie Sanders says it looks like I've lost the race and gave up. Meanwhile we were about to file all these cases to look into this stuff but then it was too late. They had moved up the convention from usually being in September all the way up to July and that made it nearly impossible for anyone to question what had been done in these primaries. That movement of the, of the convention was under the control of the DNC. And as you may know, there was a lot of hanky-panky at the DNC with regard to emails that were then later revealed in the WikiLeaks disclosure showing that the DNC was biased against Bernie Sanders and for Hillary Clinton. And that same entity, the DNC, then moved up the convention immediately after the election so there'd be no question of what went on. So it makes you wonder, with all that said, if this early vote by mail section has been tampered with. It makes you wonder, and that's why we're doing this. But the first step is this lawsuit to get to the ballots. After we get that approved, then we're going to need your help with volunteers and probably some money to pay these guys inside here to handle the ballots and then get that evidence that we need. If we find out that there's tampering, that could change, that could have changed the election quite a bit. If Bernie Sanders would have won in, in San Diego, if we would have had time to dispute that at, right after the election, then that would have put the entire state more in question. Probably Bernie Sanders wouldn't have given up so easily and you would have had an open convention where probably, and maybe you don't know, but maybe Bernie Sanders would have had a chance to be the Democratic nominee for the president. He may have then won and we would not be in this disaster with Donald Trump where we have tweet we, we have our whole country going down in a, in a tweet, in a pile of tweets. Even people that used to be Republicans are realizing now that something very wrong has happened to this country. And that something very wrong may come down to the tampering that was done here in San Diego to this early vote by mail ballots that we have identified as a likely tampering suspect. If we do find that evidence, then we will turn that over to the authorities, such as the state attorney general, to prosecute the wrongdoers and recover the normal operation of our elections. Do you think we can do it by just this one thing? Unfortunately, there's so much more wrong with these election officials and these election departments. It isn't even funny. That's why we had our earlier lawsuit regarding the 1% manual tally where they only did it to this first part of the election and they ignored the other 40% or so of the ballots that were never manually tallied for the audit. They just ignored those and they said we don't need to do them. We took them to court and we basically won for the most part that. We're now appealing that and Again, Alan Jirasi is in charge of that appeal. Now, I'm going to bring you up one more time, Alan, so you can tell us what's going on with that case. Come on up here. 
So the appellate process on the 1% manual tally case is basically on hold only because we're all waiting for the court record to be created by the clerk of the Superior Court and for the reporter's transcript to be transcribed by the court reporter that was at the trial. We're held hostage until those two transcripts are prepared and filed with the appellate court. Once they are prepared and filed with the appellate court, the county will have 45 days to file its opening brief, which will cover all the issues that they're interested in covering, and then we'll have an additional 45 days from their filing to file a respondent's brief and cover any issues that we're interested in covering. So we're basically held hostage until those transcripts are on file, and it's already July, so I'm trying to see if we can get this to a hearing before the end of December, maybe the beginning of January of 2018. But I'm calling every day to make sure that those transcripts are done and filed. So that's what we're waiting for. Once there's a hearing before the Fourth District Court of Appeals, they have 90 days to file a decision. That will bring us into February, March, or April of next year, and we're hopeful that once that decision is filed and the judgment is affirmed and or reversed in part in our favor, covering the provisional ballots, we will finally have state precedent on the 1% manual tally and the process of handling these ballots after the election day is over. So that's the ultimate goal, is to have state precedent and cover basically all of the election officials all throughout the state. Okay, thanks, Alan. Now, let me just try to clarify one point that he was saying that I didn't know until we started this. When you file a case at the Superior Court in San Diego, which is the court that has jurisdiction over the county of San Diego that runs the registrar of voters, and even if we win that case, and they say the state law means such and such, in other words, that you have to do the manual tally when it says 1% of ballots cast, it doesn't mean 1% of only some of the ballots cast. It means 1% of all the ballots that were cast. You sample from all of them. That's what they said. In essence, we were mostly right about that point. But even if you win that, and we did for the most part, we got it for the later vote by mails but not the provisionals, so they kind of split decision. It only applies to San Diego County. It doesn't apply to all the other 57 counties in the state unless we appeal it. And so since they ruled against us, and I think this was a strategy of the judge, was to not give us the full win. So because he said in his own mind, these people are going to want to appeal this, and we've got to give them a reason, so let's just not give them the provisionals. We think it's nonsense that you wouldn't also include the provisionals in the tally audit process because those are actually ballots that were cast at the precinct. And yet they argued that, no, they didn't have to do that. So there's still a dispute there. Now, when we appeal this, in theory, then that means that if we win this whole deal, it will apply to all the counties and we'll have to do the manual tally correctly. So that means they already have to do it correctly in San Diego. Even without that, we have a judgment. Isn't that right, Alan? Yeah, so they're going to have to do it right here already. So we got this county covered. But just by doing this appeal, we cover another 57 counties. The entire state of California will have to do it a different way because of what Citizens Oversight did here in San Diego. And these volunteers behind you, some of them that have dedicated many, many hours, days, and weeks to observing and checking on what goes on in here, have been instrumental in being able to figure out what we now know happened at this Registrar of Voters. This is what it takes. You have to go in and watch, eyes open, and look around what's going on. And so we also ask you to sign up on our website 
citizensoversight.org slash sign up and you can become one of our team members in your county either in California or in other states across the country. We have some other states that have been covered in recent elections such as Florida and Arizona has a, a, a whole bunch of people working there but uh, other states um, we have people now working with us in Chicago, which is a very, very key area, in Texas, in, um, where, where did you say? It's going yeah. all over the country. We really need it all over. Uh, but I'm just saying, we got, we got it started. So there's some people that you can turn to maybe that to help out. But we have a, a um, that we want to get every, our team set up for this next election. We have uh, the primaries coming up in less than a year and then the general election which is the off season not presidential just the gubernatorial election uh will be next year next november we don't have that much time to get this put together and but we do have a road map we do have some experience with doing it and we can tell you how to do the observation so you be the so you'll be the most effective at what you're doing now would anyone else like to say anything from all the volunteers here? Anybody want to say something? No. Oh, yes. I thank you. There's one other thing. Thank you, Patricia. Patricia Gration is one of our most honorable volunteers. Give her a hand. Okay. Donald Trump started a new commission. They call it the Election Integrity Commission, but it should be renamed the Voter Suppression Commission because their agenda, we believe, is to figure out how to suppress voters and take them off the rolls such that their party, the, the Republican Party, can most effectively win. They've already admitted, the Republicans have admitted that they do better when fewer people vote. There have been a number of campaigns called cross-check where they check names in different areas and they say, oh, that guy is John uh, Brown over there and there's a John Brown over there. They don't even check the social security number. They just purge them saying that's a double voter. Millions of voters taken off the rolls. So it took them back. A lot of this rigging on the front end of, of putting people off the registration rolls and purging them and so forth, there's almost an a, 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 a insurmountable correction that we can make. And that is to have same day registration. When you go up to the polling place, you can register right there. You don't have to do it two weeks ahead of time. How many people have been saying, oh, really, there's an election? And they say, sorry, pal, you didn't register two weeks ago, and you can't vote now. Some places it's two months, I hear someone say behind me. So they have rigged this up so that all the rigging on the front, they put that delay in there because they don't want people to be able to register in time. In California, they passed a law which allows same-day registration back in 2012. It was passed. They've been delaying all this time, saying they needed a better database, blah, blah, blah. Finally, as of 2017, it's the law in California, and they're going to be implementing same-day registration at the polling place. So in California, this is going to be our agenda, and we started a new project at Citizens Oversight called easyvoting.org. You can come to the website, you can see the other states that do have same-day registration and we need to push these other states that do not have same-day registration in that direction to thwart whatever Donald Trump and his uh, his uh, rigging crew there and their new commission is going to try to do they're trying to put together all of the make a universal database of all of the names all the all of the voters now if you think that doesn't already exist you're fooling yourself all of these parties already have these universal lists. In fact, they can tell you whether or not you like to eat uh, sardines on your pizza. 
or whether you're the member of the Chrysanthemum Growers Club of America. They know exactly what you do and what you like. That's how good their databases are. So if you think this is a something that they're doing that's, that will do that, I think it's all just bluster. But the fact remains that all of this rigging still can be done on the front end and we need to go after that and make it easier to vote. That's why we're doing easyvoting.org. We're gonna have more announcements as we unroll this in the future months, but I just wanted to give you a preview of that. We have some people researching what can be done in California. We need to really watch this because this is new in California to have same day registration at the polling place. Will they be implementing it correctly or will they likely just throw those out based on it, which party you're in or what kind of person you are? It's hard to tell. So we're going to have to be really watching that here. And then in other areas, we need to put a crunch on and a push to get same day registration in other states. So with that said, that will end our, our news conference. Come to citizensoversight.org slash sign up to sign up for our election team slash donate if you'd like to donate so that we can, uh, because we will have some expenses in terms of uh, the costs for getting, after we get to the ballots, they're going to say, okay, well, we need to sit there and handle them for you because we don't trust you with them. That's probably going to happen. Even though, think about this, they're sealed and no one will look at them and then they're just going to be discarded. They're so worried about them that we might touch them. But I understand that. We'll work with them, whatever they want to do. But we're going to have to realize that's going to happen. Okay, let's give everybody... Oh, you want to say something? Yeah. Mad stories. Hi. I, I'm concerned because I feel like many voters were not given the opportunity to vote for the candidate they wanted to because the pr presidential primary elections are closed so that even though all citizens, all taxpayers are paying taxes so that they can vote and have an election that's fair, they can't vote for the candidate of their choice if they're not registered in a certain party. So I think that easyvoting.org will help because we'll be able to change our party if we need to, to vote for the candidate that we want to on election day. That's a pretty good point. If you have same day registration, you can also change party at the very last minute. And that's going to allow or kind of reduce the, the stranglehold that these two parties, the major two parties, have on the system to some extent. I think that's the case. Okay, Josephine, come up here and say something. Hi. Um, hi. I just wanted to say one thing with regard to the whited out ballots. Uh, Patricia and I, on a few afternoons, uh, Patricia and I, a few afternoons witnessed thousands of ballots that were whited out that were for Bernie Sanders. If you think your vote counted and you're not worried about it, how do you know it wasn't your ballot that was whited out? Because they did not contact people and say your ballot was whited out for whatever reason. That was my main concern. Thank you. It's worse than that. They don't just not contact. They don't have any procedure. They don't keep any records. There's no logs. There's no final report. There's no way to verify it. There's no way to verify it. Even though they say it can be easily verified by just pulling the tape off, but no one does that. They don't even know how many. They couldn't answer any of this stuff in court under oath. So we have them in the transcript answering these questions at the last, at the last trial. And so we know what they've done. They've had to admit the whiting out. They had to admit there's no records kept. There's no reporting. There's no. There's only one person doing it at a time. There's not even two sets of eyes. It's, it's a disaster as, as well as the law that says, as Josephine reminds me, that you're not allowed to alter ballots. It's against the law. Now, others, other counties do have to modify their ballots sometimes to get them through the scanners, but they don't white them out. They create a new ballot that's pristine and they transfer it over. They keep both of them so that you can check to see that it was transferred correctly. So, that's, that's here. Now, Leanda. That's the standard. The noblest motive is a public good on their seal. Leanda, come on up here and make comments. 
Hello, I'm Leanda Ludwig, um, originally working with Audit AZ, and uh, I want to thank Ray for all the effort that he's made in San Diego that can actually change elections throughout the United States. The most important thing is for you to share this information, because if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, I mean, you're hearing <laughs> some construction here, but you have to share this information with your friends. You have to share this from state to state. If, we, if everyone follows the example of Ray Lutz and John Brakey in Audit AZ, wash, rinse, and repeat, and we come out and fight to have our vote count the way we intend it, we can make a change in this country. But without the right to have your vote count, we are slaves to this system. So share this information widely. And thank you, Ray. OK, again, thanks everybody online and that's here, all the volunteers, people at home. Share it around. Spread the word. Citizensoversight.org. And in your area, sign up, because we want to carry this forward. We should be able to look at these ballots. These are public property. This is a documentation of what happened in our election. They cannot keep these hostage inside this building under shrink wrap saying that we can't review them when we have good evidence that tampering went on by a guy who was already cited two of his subordinates were convicted of absentee voter fraud, the same kind of stuff that was been done here in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. It's done over and over, and then he comes to San Diego and is rewarded after only two months with a new job in a bigger area after fixing the 2004 election, documented in the book, Witness to a Crime. So these ballots back here, we must get to them, we must be able to review them, and that's what this court case is about. Thank you very much.